not as Negro as the blacks represent the color of African Americans. I'm a Moorish American. Peace. Yeah. Hey, five on the right, two on the left, man. You know what time it is. Yo. We just moors in America, soared through the shores and endured criminal acts of war on our character. Seven years after the fourth score, no reward. Shout out to the most courageous, they was jumping over barriers. Where does that compare to you? We come from a place where you scared to visit our area. We come from a place where it's scary for good Samaritans. Heavy luggage we carry in. Babies having babies, it's crazy being American. Praise the one and only Allah, there's no comparison. La ilaha. Ila Allah, body and very gin Laughing at you clowns like ha-ha Dodging a Nephilim Conquer low itself with a high Follow your regimen Way before they came we were gods And now we specimen Try to take the light from our eyes Thank God for Edison Then they put the wool on our eyes It's so embarrassing Now we travel frequently We should invest in Sheraton All of us got gold on our bodies Whenever we stepping in Screaming Ramadan, move a rock Training the flesh again Wishing we could move as a unit just like the Mexicans Dodging all the foods with estrogen Synthetic medicines All sin is in devilish Sometimes the decisions that you make Come for a better gift Sometimes when you sin is to relate to all your brethren Heavenly gates all in our face We the champions We live in the sky We see the angels on the chariots Waiting on the $20 bill Face a Harriet I bet you I'ma carry it I'm in love with music To the point I wanna marry it But my love for people is greater So I write messages Largest spending power, but we still sit at a deficit Living amongst prejudice, even at our residence Moors in America, flourishing, excellent Let's buy up some neighborhoods and groom our own president Yeah And I come to you today With all intentions of spreading Love Truth Freedom and justice. All right, Islam Moors, peace and love to everybody here. We're going to be talking about the Supreme Grand Council today and the more scientific of America in general, what it's about. So I'm sure you have questions. If you're watching it live, type them in the chat. If you're watching this later on, feel free to chime in. Drop your comments. This video represents the views of the presenters and is based off of our personal research and life experience. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, I rise and get the highest praise to the Most High, the Creator of the Universe. We refer to Him as Allah, but whatever you call Him or her, whatever you want to say, it's all right with me. We give honor to our divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali, and we also give honor to everything Moorish. Honor to all the faithful Moorish American Muslims, the light bringers watching right now. Good afternoon. You're listening to the true and living light bringer Moors in America. As always, I'm your brother Lloyd Douglas, also known as Sharif Ali. Here, we uncover and bring glorious light to all issues pertinent to the Moorish American paradigm. That's what we do on this podcast known as Moors in America. And we get in live today. I know there's going to be some questions see people talking about this everybody's wondering what's up with it what's up with the supreme grand council what is it what does it do what's its power what's its scope of power what authority does it actually have is it important does it even matter we're going to discuss that we're going to expose stuff. we're going to speak on we're going to give it to you real and raw <laughs> some people might even be worried but don't worry we're not going to put anybody's names out there we're just going to keep it real we're going to going to let you know what's going on, what it's about, um, the reality of it, <clears throat> as far as we're concerned, and uh, what we can do about it, how this affects us, or does it even affect us, that's what we're going to do, so as I just said in the chat, feel free to type your questions, and if we have any experts, any people who are experts on the topic, want to 
share your measure of understanding, feel free to let me know and maybe we can get you in here. There are some things that I have to go over. I have to let you know because it's like this is an elusive topic. Like there's people that don't want you to really know what the temple is even really about unless you come in. And like people aren't going to come into something that they don't understand. So we're going to let you know what it's about. All right, because people want to be secretive about it. They want you to come in and find out you're not coming into something that you don't understand. Or even if it's even relevant, does it even matter? So we're going to talk about that. All right, we're, we're going to go to the source for this, though. So it's not just going to be about opinions, how you feel. You know what they say about how you feel. Nobody cares how you feel. We, we're going to get down and dirty and, and really, like let you know what's really going on and like I said we're gonna go to the source where it actually came from so this is something you definitely want to like and share help get this information out there help get the algorithms up everybody click that share button and um it's Moors in America you know how we do let's go ahead and get started Peace, Morris. Here we are. Uh, we're live. We're going to go ahead and um, start talking about this, the Supreme Grand Council. Really, what I want to do first, I want to um, explain what it is, um, how it affects you or how it doesn't even affect you at all. Right. We're, we're going to discuss that, um, given the history, um, how it's set up, why it's set up, what the temple is, why we even should even be concerned about it at all. And then we will discuss the reality of it as as things are right now, like the real deal. OK, so that you understand what this is all about and, and then how it affects you. And you can make a decision like what to do about it. All right. Or, or what not to do. And I think this is really important. Um, once again, I'm just saying everybody in here, make sure you like and share the video. We'll put that at the bottom of the screen. Make sure you like and share this. Um, because these are questions that people are asking. I see like one dude in particular, he's always making YouTubes about the Supreme Grand Council. Um, he feels like it has power and authority, like it needs to be enacted. And we'll discuss why. You'll understand why people feel like that. And then you'll also understand whether or not that's true. Okay, we're going to go to the source. So first things first, um, since we don't have any questions, good. We're just gonna jump into this. So first things first, like we're, we're gonna talk about the temple, what it is, why it's here, and um, why this whole Supreme Grand Council thing is on, the, um, is on the minds of a lot of people. Okay, so first off, okay, good. Everybody can see that screen. Islam, I see you. I see the brother in the chat too. Um, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the council what power and scope of authority it actually has, how it's in shambles or if it's in shambles, we're gonna discuss all that. Um, but first, as we get to that, we wanna talk about the temple, period, the Morris Science Temple of America, all right? It was started as a religious corporation by our brother, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, all right? When he set this up, um, he set up the temple um, it has a simple purpose, right? To uplift fallen humanity, okay? But it gets a little deeper than that because for us, uplifting fallen humanity includes correcting 
the situation that we found ourselves in, right? We found ourselves in a particular, a peculiar situation that's particular to us, especially the people in North America referred to as, um, well, nowadays referred to as black or African-American, but even throughout the Caribbean, Central and South America as well, right? Because our people in particular had been disconnected from their own heritage, their own history, their own language, of course, our names, our own religion. And to the point where we didn't even have our own um, line of descent, something that everybody else has. Everybody has their own line of descent right? It ties them to a people. We were placed into a category that was created by colonizers, specifically um, at at that point in time in the past would have been Negro. It was something that was created. The Negro was designated as something that was savage, um, that had to be civilized, that had to be given a religion. So there was now a mission to Christianize all these people, right? So they're giving you a religion. They're giving you Christian names. You're a creation. And you're limited. You're hamstrung no matter what you do because you're under someone else. So the prophet created the Moore Science Temple of America so that we could empower ourselves by returning to the ways of our forefathers and foremothers. Okay. And so this is um, important for us for several reasons. So we had to return to something. So an entire structure is set up to educate us. This is what the temple is about, educating you, getting you back into the ways of your ancestors, returning to the mind state of your ancestors, because all is mine. So you're returning to the mind state and now you're beginning to actually resemble who you actually are because you you are who your forefathers were. Nobody can change that unless their powers extend beyond the great God Allah. So what is the prophet returning us to? I want to go to this book. It's uh, by Manly P. Hall. It's called Freemasonry of the Ancient Egyptians. Okay, so I want to go to a specific section in here where he's talking about Kratoa, uh, Rapoa, the initiation rites of the um, that the Egyptians were doing, right? Because he speaks about the ancient government that the Egyptians had, and we're going to speak about this for a reason, right? This um, this ancient form of government that the Egyptians had was not just limited to Egypt. Egypt was a um, Egypt was like a colony of an even more ancient civilization. And that's why most of the religions in the world have portions of ancient Egyptian practices in them or thought, okay? Because this was like a mother civilization for all the other civilizations. Why? Because Egypt was a part of something even more ancient that was actually a worldwide civilization. I'm saying this because when we're discussing the ancient um, government that Egypt had, this wasn't just limited to that one area in North Africa because they were practicing the remnants of what our ancestors practiced. Okay, and so we're talking about this for a reason, and you'll see why in just a second. Just hang on with me. All right, so we're reading from Freemasonry of the Ancient Egyptians. And it says in here, the government of ancient Egypt was theocratic. While the pharaoh appeared to be the head of the state, the priests were the actual governors of the empire. So those of you who are already in the temple, who already understand, you already know where I'm going with this, right? Or at least you should. Okay? If you're being taught, if you're learning, if you're in a good structure, you you already know where I'm going with this. While the pharaoh appeared to be the head of the state, who was actually running it. The priests were the actual governors of the empire. The king was placed on his throne by the priests, maintained there by priestly influence. And remember, okay, the priesthood, that class, the priesthood class in Egypt, they were actually referred to as more. More was the <laughs> was actually the um the term for the priesthood class. But that's not really that important right now. So the king was placed on his throne by the priests, maintained there by priestly influence, and remained the whole of his life under the guardianship and protection of the priesthood. Okay, so the priests were the actual governors. The temples were the sanctuaries of the letters and sciences, and learning in all its branches was cultivated exclusively exclusively by the priesthood. And so I, I had seen on like another video where the guy interviewing had asked, like, 
I think it was a question in the chat. People were saying like, why, why are all the leaders that we have priests? You know, and they're talking about like the Al Sharptons and the Jesse Jacksons, like they're all Christian priests because this is actually our ancient practice. Even though we've gotten away from it, these people are practicing Christianity because that was what was forced on them. They're actually in their own way doing what we've always been doing, right? We always had, um, as it said here, priests participating in the governing of our empires, okay? Because we always had a theocratic government, even when we got away from it. So you always have um, these ministers, this priesthood running things, okay? Um, skipping down a little bit, but in ancient Egypt, learning was regarded as a high privilege. So this was all pushed into the mystery schools, right? So as people got up into um, higher learning, right, it goes into the mystery schools so that you have to put in some work to actually understand what's going on here with the high sciences. They may be hidden in um, mythology, right, in allegory, okay? But what's really important here is to understand that our ancient government was theocratic. Theocratic meaning of God, right? No separation really of church and state. This is how we always did, okay? And um, that's really all I wanted to talk about from that book. But just to make sure this is understood, we always had a theocratic government, okay? As we got away from this, we began to fall. Why? Because we took on the ways of others. So why is that theocratic government thing important? For those who aren't familiar with the temple structure, okay, when the prophet established the Morris Science Temple of America, all right? He didn't just make a church, all right? He created a theocratic constitutional monarchy. It's our government. So we're returning to the ways of our ancestors. And this is why I said that Egypt wasn't just, that type of culture wasn't just limited to that region, all right? They were practicing the remnants of an ancient um worldwide civilization, meaning over here in the Americas, meaning over there in different parts of Asia, throughout the world, right? Because this civilization was so old that it was in existence before the continent split apart. So we're going back to something that's ancient. So for those who don't understand why we're Moors, this is why, because we're, we're predating all of that. Okay, but let's go back into here. So, um, the structure of the, the Morris Science Temple of America is actually set up. It's a government. It's a theocratic government. All right. But we're going to discuss that. OK, so um, just looking at religion. Right. Religion and government actually are supposed to go hand in hand. They're supposed to. All right. When we return to this um, way of being right, where we're conducting ourselves under higher standards. In order without the need of other people to police us, all right, we're able to, to control ourselves and move as a, as a unit. Now we're civilized, all right? When the prophet actually established the Morris Science Temple of America, just to go into the, um, the actual setup of it, right? He set it up in Chicago. Um, let me pull something up for you, all right? actually going to pull up the back of the uh, 101 questionnaire. All right. When he set it up in Chicago, um, he could have just set up a regular church, but he didn't. He um, he used these statutes that were set up uh, called Herds Revised Statute in Illinois to set up a religious society. Right. If you look at the bottom of the back of the questionnaire, you'll see how it says, see, Hers Revised Statute, chapter 32, 36, verse 36. Okay. And this is just giving you a section to look at, to have an understanding of what's being established here. Like it's speaking about the wording that we use, right? We use sheiks instead of um, whatever wording would have been used normally when people were setting up a religious corporation. OK, but we're going to go look at that real quickly so that you can understand what what the prophet actually set up. 
And I'm not just talking when I say that he set up a religious society. Okay. And then we'll talk about why that matters. Okay. So when you look at this section 32, um, well, chapter 32, then we're going to look at section 35 and 36, right? This is from her revised statute. This is the um, Religious Corporation Act. All right. So section 35 says any church congregation or society formed for the purpose of religious worship may be incorporated in the matter manner following by electing or appointing according to its usages or customs at any meeting held for that purpose two or more of its members as trustees uh wardens or vestrymen or other such such other officers whose powers and duties are similar to those of trustees shall be agreeable to the usages and customs rules or regulations of such congregation church or society and may adopt a corporate name and upon the filing of the affidavit as herein provided it shall be and remain a body politic and corporate by the name so adopted all right and that's important okay like a religious society a body politic we'll talk about that um the chairman or secretary of such meeting shall as soon as may be after such meeting make and file in the office of the recorder in the county in which such congregation church or society is organized which shall be recorded by such recorder and affidavit substantially in the following form so they're telling you actually how to set up your own temple okay i not tell you, right it's not with a um expiration date Right. Like the prophet didn't set the temple up so that, OK, if we're not filing every year, it's canceled. It's null and void. It's set up in perpetuity. And this is a good thing, Morris. This is a good thing, which um, actually, if I remember, I'll come back to this. This is there's a reason why that's very important. OK, but um, one thing that I just wanted to point out here and I'll, I'll return to this and let you guys know why that's important is because um, the prophet established a religious society, a body politic. How many people in here know what a body politic is? Okay, let's look up a body politic. Let me get the definition up here for you. All right, this is very important, people. Um, you really don't have to go around and recreate the wheel. A lot of people try to, um, a lot of people who are sincere try to get things moving, right? And they may get frustrated because maybe the people that they're dealing with, maybe they even try to join the temple. The people they're dealing with aren't sincere or they're stagnant or they're turning them off for some reason, or they just don't take the movement seriously, right? So they encounter people like that and then they go off and try to do their own thing. But here's the thing, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? What the prophet started does not expire. It doesn't have an expiration date, okay? And even though we have our own customs and culture and way of appointing our trustees, okay? You can do this yourself. You can do this, not maybe by yourself, just one person, Right. You're going to need more people. You're forming a society, uh, you know, community. OK, but I'm just saying, even if others are corrupt, you can do this with other Moors when you come together, because if other Moors are corrupt, the prophet ain't with them. You don't have to go through them. It doesn't matter about what filings they have on paper, but we'll get to that later. All right. But just coming back to this. Right. Um, as you saw in there in the wording. Right. It, it allows for the creation of a religious a society, a body politic, okay? So when you really look at what was done, let's look at Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 6th edition, 1856. This is dealing with international law. Body politic is a government, all right? Government, corporations. When applied to the government, this phrase signifies the state. As to the persons who compose the body politic, they take collectively the name of people or nation. So the members of the Moore Science Temple of America are citizens of this nation, right? Ideally, we would have at least dual citizenship so that you can still function and do what you need to do within the scope of the United States. But um, individually, as it says here, they are citizens. 
when considered in relation to their political rights and subjects is being submitted to the laws of the state. So this state, the Moore Science Temple of America is a state, it's a body politic. Okay. It is often used in a rather loose way to designate the state or nation or sovereign power of the government of a country or municipality. Okay. So ideally, this is a state. And this is why the prophet referred to the Asiatic states of America. Let me see if I can pull that up for you too. That's actually in the Moorish literature. Um, I believe that was published in the Moorish Guide. But he referred to the Asiatic states of North America. Okay, uh, we'll get this up on the screen for you. Now, he's not using this terminology for no reason, but we're going to show you why. So be patient, Moors. We're, we're sticking to what the prophet actually did, what he brought the example set and the laws. Because when the prophet printed these in the Moorish guide, this was law for us. So let's look at to all governors, grand sheiks, and head officials of all temples. Okay. No, you don't create a state by filing in Illinois. That's not what this is about. Um, real briefly to answer that, as I see somebody said that, that sounds good, right? That sounds like real slick. You don't create a state by filing in Illinois. That's what a lot of these people are doing now. They think, oh, I could file this, I could file that and be recognized. No, that's not how you create a state. He created a state because they set up temples in all of these different communities. Okay. Set up temples in all these different communities. And then what happened? We're going to come right back to that. But then what happened? Everywhere the temples were at, you now have commerce taking place. All right. And this is very important. Very important. I'm glad you said that, even though I was going to get to that in a minute, but I'm glad you said that. Okay. So what does it say? It says this is the policy of every temple to have a community store and a laundry owned and operated by qualified members of the temple. And all of the cities will be found a store or a laundry. And in some cities are two or three stores and markets. There's also attached to the activities of the temples that has to do with the question of employment for the members. Right. So they're employing their members, but they're generating finances. And this isn't just locally. Right. Because you also have a treasurer a national treasurer. So you have a treasurer for the local temple, right? Just like each city, each town, they're supposed to have a treasurer, right? They're supposed to have a secretary. They're supposed to have a chairman. This is how it works. But then also, and so this is the same for each temple, but then also for the state, there's a treasurer. And then for the, for the um, federal government, right? There's also a treasurer, right? For the national government. Okay. Once again, Going back to the uh, Moorish Guide, Supreme Business Manager, thanks uh, fellow members. Take an opportunity to thank those who have answered our advertisement relative to the Moors having their own town, aldermen, police, judges, and ETC. The prophet is looking forward to establishing this town in connection with a large farm during the year of 1929, right? So they want to get people's feedback on these plans. It's like, look, this is what we're doing with the finances. You're not just passing the collection plate. Right. We're getting out here. We're purchasing land. We're opening businesses up. OK. And that's generating finances locally for East Temple. But then also, what's that doing? We have a per capita tax. So we're moving as a nation. We're collecting finances at a national level. For real. Not just from your temple dues. No, we're collect collecting finances from businesses. Right. So we have our own tax system set up. So it's not just like church because it's like, look, we're bringing in businesses. OK, so we're doing this locally. And then since we see ourselves as a nation, we're all collecting finances at the national level, too, for our own national agenda. So locally, you have your agendas. You may need to move and will and deal at the local level to get laws and things, to, um, you know, pertaining to your people in that area but then also at the state level you know at the you know at the national level you need things done so finances are being collected nationally right moving as a nation okay and this is what the prophet set up so not knocking you but for those questions and things that you're saying show that you don't really understand and there's nothing wrong with you not understanding this is not like they teach you this in school how else are you gonna know 
Okay, but then to get back to what you're saying, some people may be frustrated because you see the Morris Science Temple of America as is, and it's not a state. It's pitiful. You have Moors in there who mentally, you know, they're the N-word. They're not doing anything. They're not moving as a state. They're not moving and shaking. They don't have any businesses going. I'm not saying all because you have Moors who are taking it seriously. Okay, but then you have the ones who aren't even sincere about it. And some of them in leadership. And they're pitiful. And so that's why, yeah, what you said, yeah, you could say that. Because they're not moving properly. But they're not following the prophet. We're all supposed to imitate the prophet. So if you're setting up businesses locally, everywhere there's a temple. What? Let me get that back up on the screen. What did it say? Every temple is supposed to have this. Every temple is supposed to have several businesses. Not just your little um, selling hot plates here and there. No, not knocking you selling hot plates, but no, a grocery store, <laughs> right? Like bringing in money, like where, where, where your customers and clients aren't just people that look like you, not just your friends and family, all types of people coming into the grocery store, right? We serving everybody, okay? So it's the policy of every temple to have a community store, a laundry, right? And then not only that, then it, it, it goes even further. In all of the cities will be found a store or a laundry. And some cities are two and three stores and markets. So that's what the temple is doing, bringing in finances locally and then kicking in a portion for our national treasury, right? And then what's those finances supposed to be going towards? Getting more land, um, getting the things that we need done. Because the way everybody else plays the game, right? They're buying senators and congressmen to get what they need done. Okay? For some people to think that it's just like, oh, I don't know, innocent and fun. Maybe that you don't like hearing that, but that's the truth, right? They're playing the game at that level. So that's like one of the things that may need to be done, right? You need to get these laws made. You need to get X, Y, and Z done. So they're moving as a nation. And this is how come when a prophet traveled, he's being met by dignitaries and heads of states. When he goes to Cuba, for example, he's not meeting with just Joe Blow who's selling hot plates. He's meeting with the dignitaries over there. He's going to Mexico. He's meeting with the heads of state and he's treated as the head of state, the head of what states, the head of the Asiatic states of North America. And when he's here, he's meeting with the governor. When the governor's got something going on, he's saying, hey, prophet, here you go. Come on through. You know, we're traveling. We're in the presidential car on the train. He's sitting in, in, in there with them. They're having meetings. It's not because he filed something with Illinois. It's because he had real people backing him up, thousands of people. And they're putting their finances up. That's what makes it a state. So you're correct. It ain't about filing with Illinois. I'm just showing you the structure, how it was set up and why it was set up that way. It goes deeper than that. Don't you ever think you can file your way to freedom? That's what some of these moors are doing, man. They charge it for paperwork and it's all whack. It's all lame. They've been filing that paperwork for decades. I'm decades in this now. I'm almost two decades in. Not, not quite, but like early 2000s when I first found out about the profit and everything and like, so I haven't seen some of this lame stuff, man. And it's, it's whack. I mean, sh nobody should feel cool about pushing, you know, stuff that's not going to work. And it's been proven that it doesn't work. You can't file your way to freedom. That's lame to even think that. So now it ain't about filing in Illinois. I'm showing you the structure and why it was set up this way. But no, right? So they're they're cleaning themselves up. We're starting to move as a nation, right? We're putting our finances towards <laughs> putting our finances towards our local goals, generating finances now locally, and then putting a portion towards our own national goals. Okay. And that's why, and then we have a national head that's respected because of this purpose. Because the prophet could say, okay, well, yeah, uh, we have thousands of more that will vote in this direction, you know, 
you're trying to get in office so that you can be in power and will and deal we can help you get in there but we need x y and z right that's also a power move but then also if these people don't want to play ball with you they can't call your bluff because you're putting up finances you can do it yourself you can even put your own candidate in office even if he's just there to take away votes from the other guy they don't want to play ball with you right that's playing ball at a different level it's nobody's doing that right now not saying that no one's trying but nobody's doing it right now and um from a moorish perspective there's no moorish head of state like that right the closest thing you would have to that is farrakhan minister farrakhan is recognized by thousands of members of the um nation of islam as far as i know there's no grand sheik of the more science temple of america that has thousands of members like that they recognize it. and that they, they all respect them and will move in that direction it's not you know it just it's not realistic okay all right islam so just um also looking in the chat just to see if you guys have some more questions but let's get back to this okay so what um what we were saying in here is that the prophet was referring to the people here the, the divine and national movement as the asiatic states of north america so going to um to all governors grand sheets and head officials of all temples i would try to get the date on that but i'm not gonna worry about that right now this is official um this was published in the morris guide by order of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, has said the following thing during this, our very first convention, okay, 1928. Ali said, Science Temple of a used and defined part in the advancement of the sacred obligation of American citizenship. So, anyone trying to say you're not a citizen, you're not an American citizen, you know, you're going against our prophet, I can't ride with you on that. You by yourself. I roll with the prophet. I don't care how cool you are or how cool you think you are. I don't care. I'm rolling with the prophet. So um, that should take care of that, right? So it's to advance, uh, play a useful and defined part in the advancement of the sacred obligation of American citizenship. As the Moorish Divine National Movement was founded for the uniting of the Asiatic states of North America. Founded on May 1st, 1916. All right, and then that was the first convention, 1928. It featured delegates from 15 different states. So he's speaking about our people, you know, as a people, as a nation. Delegates from 15 different states, from local branch temples and subordinate temples, which have been established for the uplifting of fallen humanity. All right, but just going back to that, founded for what? The uniting of the Asiatic states of North America. This is not the only time he refers to us as the Asiatic states of North America. Okay, then um, just to give in brief, uh, during the first convention, you had general work and civil accomplishments reported by grand sheiks of each branch temple and subordinate temple. Each grand sheik was required to give a reporting of his temple. And the governor and the, and the continued growth and development of this divine movement. Okay, so the grand sheiks, the governors, they're giving reports about the growth of business and enterprises. Right. We're not just in there to, you know, shake hands, to wear costumes. Hey, look at me. Right. Growth. You're supposed to be giving reports about the growth of business and enterprises of. OK. So and then we're, you know, this brainstorming, seeing what's working for you. This is what's working here. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Maybe even just doing business with each other. Right. This is what convention is supposed to be about. And then leading up to convention, then the grand sheiks and the governors, we're not supposed to be meeting to talk about planning convention. That's whack. It's supposed to be business getting handled because how are you going to be a convention reporting about your growth of business and enterprises if you're not handling business up to convention? So when you get there, OK, we're we're comparing notes. We're showing what's working. We are reporting on the growth. OK, so you're not supposed to spend the whole year planning up to convention. There's no point in even going to convention. There's no point in even having convention if there's no growth. There's no business. There's no businesses. There's no enterprises. What are you having convention for? You're not following the profit. 
okay? You have no Asiatic states of North America if you have no businesses, no growth, no development, not acquiring any land, right? Like how many years have you had your temple and your charter and still don't have a location, right? You should at least be getting that done and then making moves to acquire more land, opening businesses, maybe having apartments, renting out places, like something, you, you're supposed to be having growth, all right? And that's what convention's about now. We're moving as a nation. We're bringing in finance, okay? So now nationally discussing the goals, maybe moving, um, you know, getting things done at a national level. Like, hey, we're going to get this land for, you know, growing our food, <laughs> right? Like, come on. So that's what it was about. Okay. And then um, let me get out of here. So I just wanted to share that though, because as you see, the prophet was referring to us as the Asiatic states. Okay. And this is important because, um, you know, he was moving as a head of state, but it wasn't because of the fouling in, in Illinois. I'm just showing you what the setup was, like what why he's setting this up as a as a um body politic, as a religious society. Like that wasn't done for no reason. And it's not about the fouling. Don't ever be that simple minded that you think it's about the fouling because that'll have you turned around and, and you know, probably wasting a lot of money with somebody who's got a scam for you. Like I got some swamp water back here. You know, I'm going to sell you this. You're going to file your way to freedom. That's not going to happen. Right. But this is just showing you the setup. So he, he established this this way in this order because it allowed for the freedom for us to truly fulfill our mission. We're missionaries. So by setting the temple up as a religious society and our and our our um, goals are to uplift fallen humanity. And, and what did our prophet say? This is important. Like every more should notice. What did our prophet say? Um, what I just had up on the screen. He's giving you our mission. You're supposed to notice. That's not supposed to be your first time seeing that. So what did the prophet say about the Asiatic states? He's giving you the mission of the Morris Science Temple of America. And it's for the uniting. It was founded. The, the Morris Divine National Movement. It was founded for the uniting of the Asiatic states of North America. So this is implying that we have dual citizenship. but We're supposed to. Like, ideally, we're not there yet. So it was the Morris Science Temple of America was organized to play a useful and defined part in the advancement of the sacred obligation of American citizenship. So regardless of what anyone else says from our perspective, we can't truly be American citizens if we are connected to our own um, line of descent. If we don't know who we truly are, if we're still going along with labels that were created to, um, to take advantage of us, created to keep us as second class citizens. Right. We have to step outside of that mode and return to what we were before the papal bulls, before um, these labels, these this slave caste system was forced on us. Right. So we're returning to that as the Morris Divine National Movement was founded for the uniting of the Asiatic states of North America. This is powerful. So we're creating this. This is why the temple was founded. Right. To return us back to this. All right. Islam and um, okay, we have a question. What what is the sacred obligation of American citizenship? If you have the answer to that, please please share. What is the sacred obligation? I'm a, I'm a looking for something else too. I'm gonna about to pull up. Is I can give you one example, right? One example when the prophet was speaking on our sacred obligation, when we don't participate, um, when when we don't participate politically, right? When we're not exerting our will, all right. When we look at um, people in office, people in power, right? Yes, voting. Brother said that voting. So when we look at um, people who are in positions of power, right? They're public servants. 
So they're not supposed to lord and rule over us. They're not supposed to just, okay, we want them to do this. We want them to move that way. We want to spend all these millions of dollars in tax money on this. No, no. You're a public servant. You're put in this position to manage the finances for the governing of our society. You're not here to exert your will or your, you know, whatever, whatever, um, you know, side deals you may be making, or maybe a corporation is paying you to to look the other way so that they can keep polluting, or you know, you none of that has anything to do with the will of the people. So you're a public servant and you're to serve the people. But since we're dealing with people and people who may be in their lower self, we have to stay on them. You have to make sure that they're upholding their their position. So you can't look the other way and keep your head in the sand, right? Keep your head buried and act as if eh, everything's okay, right? But then complain that your neighborhood's impoverished. And then complain that after your neighborhood's been impoverished for decades, that other people are able to come in, buy it while everything's cheap, raise the prices up, right? They call it gentrification now. Now you can't even afford to live there no more, right? And now you gotta go somewhere else. You have to go somewhere else and live in poverty. We can't complain about that <clears throat> because the way things are set up, you can change everything. I'm not even going to say overnight, but you can change things in a few years. Okay. And um, I see uh, someone in the chat. That's actually true. Right. Right. To actually have our society. Um, fitting our our higher purpose, we would have to be able to govern ourselves, and we would have to be able to govern ourselves according to divine laws, divine principles, so that we we hold ourselves to this, and now we hold you to this. And so, this is a portion of what the Morris Science Temple of America is about, right? Uplifting fallen humanity and and um, getting us to the position where we can. Right, uphold the sacred obligation of American citizenship, the what it's truly supposed to be about. And when we say sacred, maybe we're not even talking about what exactly what the Europeans established, not even knocking Europeans, just saying that what they established was actually built off of what our ancestors had established prior to them arriving. Okay, because they took bits and pieces from here and there, but also they based the constitution off of the great law of peace, which is what the indigenous people here in America were already practicing. So that's the sacred obligation. You have a function, you have laws, and you have a system that's set up that can work so that the government um, is actually serving you, all right? And so in order to get it to that point, you don't get there by, you know, just making videos on YouTube. You don't get there by just talking about it or, pretending or making spells or like like whatever people are on you don't you you have to actually put you have to excuse me you have to actually use the system that is set up for you to put people in office that will um serve the community and you can get those people out of office if they aren't fulfilling upholding their position people aren't paying attention to that that's why we have so many distractions now right so many things to keep us away from that Right. That's why when you look at the streaming services, everything is about content, content, content. Why do they want so much content? So that they have something for everyone to be distracted about. All right. But to get back to this. All right. We have an example of upholding the sacred obligation of American citizenship here. When way back in Jim Crow days, the prophet was able to get a brother in office, Louis B. Anderson. OK. How was he able to get him in office in Chicago? By getting all the Moors to vote in one direction. Some people say that he was actually a member. I don't know, but we do have him um, in addition to the, the Moors being largely responsible for getting him in office. We have him um, on film, like on in, in pictures with the prophet or with the Moors. Okay. But this is up there just to give you an example, right? The Moors put a person in office. Um, actually put a brother, Asiatic brother, in the House of Representatives, 
um, and then put other people in office too. And by getting um, the person who was actually the secretary of state by working with him, making um, agreements with him to help him to get in office, he's able now to negotiate something in exchange for that. And then later on, when this person who was the secretary of state becomes the governor of Illinois, right, which would have been no um, accident, right? The Moors helped with that. There's a there's an exchange that takes place. This is how things are done, like politically, right? Nobody's just doing anything just for no reason. Um, Moors are suffering from political slavery because uh, most of our people who do actually vote, they're, um, they've been bullied into voting Democrat, no matter what, right? They don't negotiate anything for their support. They just blindly support anyone. That's not how you win in this game. That's not how you win. That's how you lose, okay? That's how you lose, and that's how you set yourself up to stay at the bottom, okay? And so the prophet came to do something about that. We're educating, and now we're moving as a unit. So it's not just about talking. We don't want to just keep talking about it. We're actually moving on it. So the Moors were doing this back in those, those days, in Jim Crow days, which means we could definitely do this right here and now, right? There's actually no excuse. But just to go back to this also, because you know I want to do this because the brother said something about it's not about filing in Illinois. It's not. It's not about those filings. Okay, this is where the power really is. Every temple had mark um, had markets, had had stores. Every temple was generating finances. So locally, they're building bread up, and then they're also kicking back nationally. <coughs> and and you know, if if just one city's doing it, eh, that's okay. But no, if you have several cities doing it, all right, then nationally you have a. Okay, so make it done at the national, but that does it's really the state level okay so if you have several temples in your state <laughs> everyone's doing what they're supposed to starting businesses kicking in you know money generating finances you're able to get things done locally that you know um you're able to get things done so that locally your government can reflect the needs of your community all right and that was powerful. That's why they were moving as a nation. It wasn't just because they had a fancy parade and people dressed up. No, that was done later. He did all of that later. Um, one thing I'll say too, um, but I'm going to show you um, more proof of this. The prophet set up the Supreme Grand Council last as well, right? That was not one of the first things done. Okay. Well, let's go back in into this. So, um, as we established earlier, the prophet returned us to the ways of our ancestors, right? In ancient Egypt, you had a theocratic government. The priests are actually the governors of the empire, okay? So you're, you're maintaining your structure. The priests are influencing the head of state, the pharaoh. He appeared to be the head of state, but it's really the priests running things, okay? And this is what we always had, right? So that the government is in divine order. Ideally, the reason why you do this is so that the governing of your nation re remains in divine order and structure. Okay. So it wasn't all about the, the filing, the filing. Like if you just, you can go like, there's a, there's this one brother, you know, who, um, he, he always shows this filing that he has like in, um, I think in Illinois, it might be in Indiana, but he has this filing that shows that he set up his Moorish organization as a foreign corporation, a foreign nation. Okay. And it's like, that's cool and all, but that's just a filing. That's it. Right. If the prophet just went and set up the Moorish Science Temple of America is a body politic, right. As a, religious society and that's all he did was talk about it it would have been nothing it would have been nothing the reason it was something is because he's satisfied all right from an international law perspective the prerequisites for nationhood right so they didn't just do the religious filing right for the the society the body politic no no they moved they, because a nation is supposed to be self-sustaining, 
So they're generating finances locally and nationally. It's self-sustaining or at least getting to that point. Okay, moving as a nation. And then you, you have to be able to move as a unit to be able to govern yourself, capable of doing that, which they established. This is why there's law and order. It wasn't just anything goes. And then you do have to be recognized by your peers, by other nations. And the prophet was recognized as a head of state because they had all of these people generating finances. They could move as a unit and get things done. They were a nation. So like for the brother who just set up a foreign nation, that's his corporate filing like that carries no weight. Unless. They're getting things done. Right. In addition to that, they have their own businesses. They're growing their own food. They're doing all of these things that everybody else can do. Now, then you're talking about something different. But if you just go and file something, it's, that's all it is. It's a filing. It's nothing. OK, so. Um, right. The, the prophet um, filed the more science temple of America um, in Cook County. Right. He set up this religious corporation. This re it's a body politic. It's a religious society. All right. But then and instead of it just being a church, they moved as a government. And that's what changed it. OK, um, I'm sharing some information from Hakeem Bay's journal, The Moorish Paradigm. You can actually find all of this stuff online now. I believe the brothers stopped um, publishing these. But um, he, he has some interesting information in here um if you look at what it says about some of the you can't see the docs is everything looks clear on my end maybe it's because i was moving it but um he has some interesting things about the actual structure right when you have the friday holy day meetings the sunday schools right and here it's saying the friday meetings of the more science temple of america is the ritual of divine government in practice right it's following a prescribed formula laid out by the prophet Noble Drawley, the same way Congress and Senate have their own rituals of government, right? And it's all, you know, everything's enacted every time they convene. This ritual of government was handed to us by Allah through his holy prophet Noble Drawley. So none of us should be changing, altering things in any way. That's another thing. Like Moors get frustrated. They they try, maybe some Moors try to work with, you know, their brothers and sisters and they for whatever reason, you know, maybe people don't take the movement seriously or they're just stagnant. And so they go off and they try to create their own thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Right. It was already set up. Sunday school where the next generation is prepared to carry on the ritual of divine government. And where the current generation refines their understanding of their government. And then this is done at the local level at every temple. So we already have the structure and we have divine order. We have divine principles, divine law to guide ourselves by. Right. And then we want to speak on the free national standards. Right. We have our own free national standards, which every people should have. Right. Enacted for our salvation. And it shouldn't be able to, um, as it says here, to be influenced. Right. By other people infringed upon. You'll see the same wording if you look at the um, the UNDRIP, right, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, okay? You see that same wording that every people now, it, it should be understood that they should be able to form their own standard to, to, um, to do whatever they see fit to connect to their own culture, their own line of descent. And to do this without having to answer to you, to someone else, to other people say, oh, that's not who you are. I don't agree with that. Well, I, who cares if you agree with it or not? Right. After all that we've been through, we can go our own way. Right. And so we have our own free national standards. And that's why the prophet said money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. Okay. So this is returned to us and now we have everything that we need to free ourselves. We don't have to go and recreate the wheel. 
right? It's already been created for us. Um, I did want to share something else in here. So just um, there's a little list in here, like, yeah, speaking on our free national standards, right? And then once again, this is getting to the Supreme Grand Council, right? But um, basically, right, you have the standard, right? So it's across the board, right? So it doesn't matter if the temple's in Arizona or in Ohio. Now, while locally we may have diff different um, customs, different cultural, um, just different customs, right? Culturally, depending on where we're located. But we have free national standards that are the thing that unite us across the board, right? Something that we all have in common. So nobody's supposed to be remixing this. And this is why I'm saying this because you'll have people that created their own flag, right? But our flag supposed to be the same, a divine constitution. Our laws, rules, and regulations pursuant to our divine constitution, right? We should all have the same Supreme Grand Council. There's like a bunch of different people now that are claiming to be Supreme Grand Sheiks and some that even have the Supreme Grand Council. So why is there like just off the top of my head, like at least seven people claiming that, you know, claiming these titles, different, different, um, I'll put it like this. You have seven different, at least seven different, um, bodies, right. That are organizing themselves as the Morris Science Temple of America claiming to have their own Supreme Grand Council right or at least their own supreme grand sheik and there's probably at least there's probably double that maybe even higher than that but i'm just thinking about the ones just off the top of my head i could think of right not gonna name them though all right but we're supposed to have one it's supposed to just be one that we all recognize right that's silly that's foolish to have all of these different ones right so we have the one uh supreme grand council we have one holy quran and then we all have holy day meetings in Sunday school across the board. So it doesn't matter if you're in Colorado or if you're in North Carolina, this all is supposed to be the same. But then that's where the problem comes in. You have people that remix it. They got their own fact. Some people even change the wording in the constitution change. Um, you know, then of course you have all different people claiming to be the heads and claiming to be the Supreme Grand Council. But we're all supposed to be able to unite around that. OK, and that's where the power comes in now. Right. That's where the protection comes in. OK, that's also why things are broken up and split up. Because if you can't do this, there's no power. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, let's go back into the temple, though. All right. So ideally. What the prophet created um in addition to the the physical work like moving as a unit um um <clears throat> you know we can all vote in one direction we we're generating finances locally that's important but also putting up money at the national level right that's important so in addition to that in islam brother also said yeah i forgot about that so also we also all are supposed to have the same um button same nationality card the id card same turban might be different colors but we all wear a turban or fez right your national headdress right but then you have people want to change that up too oh, i don't want to wear red fez i want to wear a green fez with a yellow tassel or i want to you know i want to put stuff on my fez you know i want to write on there that i'm the you know supreme netir blah, 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 this, this, and that, right? People are doing all types of things, you know, freestyling and, hey, whatever, man. That's, you know, that's crazy. But ideally, okay, the prophet created the Morris Science Temple of America. Within it is, a, you know, we have a government. There's a theocratic constitutional monarchy. This is returning us to the ways of our ancestors now. We're now, we have divine ministers, sheiks, okay? And, and these are, are the priesthood that are members of our government. And then there's a structure. And so we get into the Supreme Grand Council too, because this plays into this, right? It's a portion of it, but we have all that is done and set up. Okay. Um, 
just going to go. Uh, these slides are really good. Um, you can actually find this online. It's been online for years, since like 2011. Um, this was authorized by uh, <clears throat> our departed brother, David Bailey L., former Supreme Grand Sheik. All right, now just speaking on the structure of the Morris Science Temple of America, right? Um, looking at Key 15 from the Morris uh, Quran questionnaire, for what purpose was the Morris Science Temple of America founded? We were just speaking on that using the words of the prophet, right? Okay. And when we were looking at, at the Morris um, literature, to all governors, great chiefs, and heads of all temples, said the prophet said that the Moore Science Temple of America was organized to play a useful and defined part in the advancement of the sacred obligation of American citizenship. Right? So now we can participate. Now we can participate as men and women empowered. As the Moore's Divine National Movement was founded for the uniting of the Asiatic states of North America. Right? So there's a there's a bigger purpose. We're, we're now coming together. And we are a nation, okay, capable of governing ourselves, but things have to be done in steps, okay? And so ultimately, this is what it was founded for, right? So there's some quotes in here. You may have seen this before. Uh, Henry Berry <clears throat> is at the House of Representatives in Virginia speaking about us, saying how we have as far as possible closed every avenue by which light might enter the Negro's mind. If we could extinguish the capacity to see the light, our work would be complete. They would be on a level with the beast of the field and we would be safe. I'm not certain that we would not do it if we could find out the process. Okay, and um, he's speaking to other delegates in Virginia in 1832, speaking about us. And, you know, they basically completed that task. All right. The prophet came to reconnect us to the light so that we could save ourselves. All right. So they did reduce us to that level. And, you know, in many ways, we're, we're still at that level. And in many ways, our people still don't perceive it. So this is what he was able to even have to rising up and, and governing yourselves, controlling yourself, taking control of your own destiny. Right, because you're cut off and don't even realize it. Okay, so this is really important. Um, when when the prophet re-established this link to who we are and set up the um, temple, so that we can now govern ourselves, so that regardless of what programs being pushed, like if we look at the program that's being pushed on our people right now, it's a program of savagery. Right, I just saw a video where there was this dude. Uh, this old guy, right? You know, I'm saying he's old because he's way too old to be on this foolishness. But this old dude who's like a blood old gang member, gang banger, and he's sitting up with this rapper, and they're all talking about gang banging and, and, and criminal activity, right? And this dude's like twice the age of the rapper, right? And um, they're sitting up talking about this on this podcast that has like half a million or 600, 700,000 views. And they're entertaining this type of foolishness, okay? And so anyone who thinks that is cool, who is into that mindset, that anyone who's even entertained by that foolishness, all right, you got to understand that this is the culture that keeps the Europeans who colonized us and their descendants now, that keeps them safe, right? Because this only breeds ignorance. This breeds more slaves to be fed into the system. And this keeps us from actually fixing our own problems. The problems come from our own lack of understanding, lack of knowledge of self, right? Why else will we go for anything? Whatever drugs being pushed to us, whatever liquor, you know, they gave the Indian liquor to, you know, to keep him um, um, complacent, right? So whatever is being pushed on us, you know, the lack of self-control, that's what's pushed to us, especially the men. Um, lack of self-control so that you just you're trying to sleep with everything right you think that you're supposed to be a beast an animal right with no control and so when you're anyone is thinking like that there's no way that you can be successful so this is what's pushed on us all right but 
the prophet set up the temple so that we can vibrate on higher principles now and govern ourselves. So it doesn't matter whatever agenda is being pushed. We're insulated. We're good. That's why it can't be left out, too, because people want to say, oh, I'm not with religion. But, you know, you'll go for any form of confusion that's being pushed at you if you don't have divine principles to stand on. Right. And that's the light that the European hid from us, right? The importance of having your own identity, your own national identity, your own culture, and then still to this day, your own religion, right? So still to this day, most of our people are Christians, some denomination of Christianity. And it really doesn't matter what denomination you're practicing, you're still, you're still Catholic. You're still some form of, uh, of a Catholic. Um, you, you fall up under the Pope and you fall up under whatever decrees they have for you. OK, so we we there's a need to have your own culture, your own identity and your own religion. And this was all returned to us through the temple. Right. That's why it can't be left out. It can't be. All right. Because all types of things are being pushed now, even throughout the I guess the so-called conscious community. Right. You have people trying to push um, this pansexual transgender agenda all types of things are being taught and pushed and some people are actually going along with this right which sounds crazy to me but you know hey anything goes if you don't stand for something right so we have something now to stand on all right we have a national identity we we have our own agendas locally and nationally Right. If we're looking at the timeline, right, just during a short period of three years, right, the prophet actually incorporated the Morris Temple of Science, right? It was a civic organization, right? Um, um, as you see here on this timeline, there was a foreigner who tried to uh, get the the um, he tried to get the um, Islamic scholars in Egypt to issue a fatwa to the prophet. Right. And it failed. Right. This was in 1927. In 1928, the prophet went into Havana, Cuba, to the Pan American Conference, and he was recognized as a head of state. Now, we can show why he was recognized as a head of state when you look at just what we were speaking on earlier today. Right. He was he was um, the temples locally were opening businesses. They were generating finances. All right. And the prophet said something very key. He let us know that you're not a nation if you don't have your own treasure. You don't have your own treasury. Right. So we're generating finances locally and kicking um, a portion, you know, a per capita tax, kicking finances up to um, the national level. Right. In 1928, then it was legally changed to the Moore Science Temple of America as a religious corporation. Right. Establishing home rule authority and self-government. All right. The, the corporate status was actually changed in 1929. All right. But in 1928, he announced to the world when um, convention took place later that year. Right. Um, in the beginning of the years when he went to Havana, Cuba. Right. He also went to Mexico. Then later that year in October, we had convention. You had the um, parade to announce to the world that we're a nation. All right. So you don't want to do things out of order. Right. There is record of the prophet being at the Pan American Conference. And um, it's funny that somebody would actually come up and say that because, you know, through the diligence of some of our more scholars, we actually have the records, um, the ship manifest for the prophet and our brother Kirkman Bay going to Cuba in 1928. Let me see if I can pull that up. If I can't, you just have to, you know, you can go look it up on your own. But um, let me see if I can pull that up briefly. But we actually do have that. You know, this brother's, well, this is not a brother. It's just a troll up in here. But, um, you know, it's funny, too. This is how you know that you're on the right track when you have people who are just, like, obsessed with you, right? People that, like, have no purpose all they do is come and look at everything you're doing. But um, yeah, so you we actually have the uh, shipping manifest showing uh, the prophet and our brother Kirkman Bay, and we have that. So let's pull that up on the screen. 
everyone serves their purpose. So even people who appear to be against you or who, who appear to just be trying to bother and bug, they're serving a purpose. You know, you're right about the brother being the dude being an agent, but um, everyone serving their purpose. So I'm glad that that was brought up just so that I could show this. Okay. So um, what you're looking at, let me scroll in on that. Okay. So we had that up closer. Okay. So this is a shipping manifest. Um, if you can see up here, it says sailing from Havana, Cuba. And this is from, um, I think from ancestry.com. This is just through doing like, um, doing a search on there in this time period, um, just to see, um, who was shipping out of the country. So on January 25th, 1928, sailing from Havana, Cuba, arriving at port of Key West, January 25th, 1928. And if we look at the names on here, right, we have uh, Mr. Drew Ali and Charles K. Bay, ages 42 and 44, Right, and we got Drew Ali. Uh, it says Norfolk, Virginia, but uh, it says January 8, 1886. Kirkman Bay was born September 7, 1885, and um, says that they were both coming from Chicago, Illinois, and that's all the information we have. But <clears throat> we know that they actually went to Chicago, I mean, not <laughs> to Chicago, to Cuba. And then not only that, but this um, was reported in the Moorish Guide. And then also, I believe it was reported in the Chicago Defender. The Chicago Defender was an Asiatic-owned newspaper. I believe it's still, it's still in circulation. All right? And so this was reported in the newspaper. So for the person saying that never happened, there's not record of it. It was reported in the newspaper. Like the news paper you know the the same news that everybody else reads you can't just say oh that's fake right there has to be um research done or or something that that's done to um back up the information being shared in the news or else you can lose your job if you're reporting on something that never actually happened right so this was in the news and then we have the shipping manifest showing that they actually did it. Just want to show that so that people don't think this is just some fantastical rumor that never actually happened. This was reported in the actual newspaper. And when it was reported, I believe, in the Chicago Defender, they referred to Prophet Noble Drew Ali as President Ali. OK, and that's important to um, to mention as well, because he was referred to as president because of what? because he was a head of state. He was representing the Asiatics of North America as a head of state. And that's why he was referred to as President Ali. Okay? And so that's why I wanted to point that out because, you know, this this isn't just fantastical talk, right? This actually occurred. Um you know what? That should be in Morris Morris literature too. I, I can pull that article up, but that was um, that was actually published in the uh, Morris Guide. And let me pull that up for you. I have no that. That's a great question, though. I I don't have the answers to that. Okay, so um, if we look at Morris Head makes plan for conclave. As I was saying, I believe this article is from the uh, Chicago Defender. It says beginning on October 15th and continuing through the entire week, the Morris Science Temple of America, of which Mr. Drew Ali is the founder and president, will hold his first general conference at Unity Hall. President Ali began definite plans to this end upon his return from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, where he spent several days lecturing at the local temple. Um, temple playing a useful and defined part in the sacred, advancing the sacred obligations of American citizenship. Indications are that this convention will be of one of the most important, most interesting ever held in the city. 
It will be featured by delegates attending in pilgrimage from 15 different states where local temples have been established. There will be an interesting parade. Um, Reports also of the business enterprises that have been established in connection with the temples. Sessions uh, during the session, specific reports of the general work and civic accomplishments of local uh, accomplishments will be made. And it's speaking about the businesses such as two grocery and market stores in Detroit, a laundry in Pittsburgh, moving and express business and grocery in Chicago. Um, it must be kept in mind that no great movement can take definite shape in two or three years so as to be airproof, said President Ali. However, through accumulating experience, each annual convention ought to witness a per- more perfect and wider functioning organization. And um, just showing, okay, he's referred to as President Ali several times. Um, this is not the only example, though. So there's other examples. But I also just wanted to show that because, yeah, you, you know, it may sound like it may just sound like rumors it may sound like fanciful talk right like it never really happened but we actually know they did attend the um, pan-american conference in chicago do we have minutes of the meeting no did they actually go all the way to cuba yes right did the prophet actually go all the way to mexico yes was he received and treated as a head of state yes okay Do we have all the details of everything that was discussed? No. Okay. Now there are minutes like um, from the ADEP chamber from uh, 1928, but like we don't have all the minutes from the the, uh, conference, but we do know that he attended. Okay. All right. So yeah, people can't, you know, down that. Um, So moving on, right? The temple was established and and things moved fast, like just in a period of like three years. Boom, boom, boom. It took longer than that, but just saying over a small period of time, right? You have these these temples, which are actually um, centers of different communities that are all over the nation. And they're putting finances up. And that's where the power is coming from. All of these people moving in one direction having their own standard, their own religion, and generating finances, all right? And so others who are outside could say these things, as it says here on the screen, say it's nation. We, we, filing doesn't make it a nation. That filing isn't what made it a nation. He set that up because he knew what was to come. There was a plan. This isn't just going to be some church. Oh, no, not knocking a church. It's just that we have we have um, a higher purpose. Right. And in order to uplift fallen humanity, we have to build our nation because it starts with us. And so this is a part of our mission. It's a part of our religious duty. Even opening the opening of businesses. It's a part of our religion. And that's in the prophet's words. So it's a part of our religion, which means these businesses could, in theory, be opened up under the temple, right? In theory, they could, because that's a part of our religion. You can't leave that out. All right, hang on a second. Okay, so um, going back to this, um, how can a religious society be a nation state, right? Okay, so um, it's not just the filing, like we said earlier, uh, you know, the filing of a body politic. No, all right. It's the way that the that the um, more divine and national movement actually moved, right? Having over a hundred thousand members, right? You have to be sustainable, self-sustainable. So you have to have people. This is speaking about um, the prerequisites, the qualifications for nationhood from an international law perspective, right? Right from um, that same meme that I had up about um, body politics, talking about um, Bouvier's law dictionary, okay? When you look at that, right, it's, it's letting you know 
that in order to have a nation, it has to be sufficient in numbers, able to maintain and to perpetuate itself. Right? So it can be met if you just have members gathering casually, right? We meet in for church, we go in a little dance, we go in a little potluck, right? Can't be met by a casual gathering of individuals or by a chance group of bandits or by a society of pirates. So this is why it's a nation. Over 100,000 members by 1928 in North America in three years. 36 temples throughout this hemisphere. An independent economy, right? Their own publishing company, the Morris Guide, the Morris Manufacturing Company, stores, grocery stores, moving businesses, companies, enterprises in major cities. They're acquiring land, right? All right. So going over the requisites, the prerequisites for a state, for a nation, then you have to have an organized government exercising control over and endeavoring to maintain justice within the territory. So once you acquire your territory, even if at the time maybe you're stateless, we don't have defined borders, but you have the potential to. In order to, to be recognized as a nation, you must be able to exercise control over your own people. And we have that. That's why we have um, that's why we have divine ministers and sheiks, right? That's why we have executive rulers. They represent the governing body, the officers within the Moorish Divine National Movement. That's your grand sheiks, governors, and grand governors. All right, within our movement, our Islamic nation state. That's why they mentioned within the questionnaire, you have all these speeches and articles that the prophet published about how our system is set up. We have the ability to govern ourselves, but in order for this to work, right? In order for this to work, our executive rulers, our governors, our sheiks must be abiding by the prophet's laws as well. That's another reason why you know, people lose faith. People don't trust it, right? You can't have, um, you can't have the nation and it's successful, and your governors, your sheiks, your executive rulers don't abide by the prophet's laws, right? Our governors, our sheiks, can't be out here getting drunk and high. Why? The prophet said over and over again, right? They are to imitate the prophet in speech and teaching. In any said temple, they must not be under the influence of intoxicating liquors or any harmful motive that will terminate to become a, de a detriment to the organization. So it's bad if they're doing it secretly. That's bad enough. But it's even worse than they're getting publicly humiliated, like getting arrested, you know, taking a plea and stuff like that. That can't happen. It must not be known that any leader is staying away from home or neglecting his duty at home or must allow the public to know their wrongdoings. They must forever live the life of love at home and it must be known by the members. So if we have people who are in these positions as sheiks, they're governors, they're divine ministers, and they're out here getting drunk and high, right? And the leadership ain't doing nothing about it. They setting the bar extremely low you have no nation the prophet's not with you you have no power no authority because you don't even follow the prophet right and then if you're in leadership you got to make some tough decisions you've got to follow the prophet no matter what all right so there is no you know nation and the prophet's not with you if you can't even have you know our own sheiks and governors that abide by the laws that the prophet set. You have nothing. It doesn't work, right? So you can't pick and choose which ones to abide by or which ones fit you. It don't work like that. It's all or nothing, okay? And if you don't follow the prophet's rules, then the prophet ain't with you, period, all right? Then there must be a fixed territory, okay, which the inhabitants occupied nomadic tribes or peoples are thus excluded from consideration this is speaking about nationhood to be re recognized as a state as a nation right from international law perspective so what's our fixed territory is defined clearly in chapter 47 verses 6 and 7 
of the Holy Quran of the More Science Temple of America. We're speaking about the Supreme Grand Council, but it's important for you to understand this. Okay? If you don't understand this, you don't know how any of this works. All right, Islam sister, make sure you like and share this so that uh, you know, family, friends, more people can get in here and listen and learn. So um going to this um the third uh requisite prerequisite the fixed territory ours is described to us we have divine instructions um given to us by our prophet chapter 47 verse 6 and 7 it says the moabites from the land of moab who received permission from the pharaohs of egypt to inhabit and settle northwest africa they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present moroccan empire with their Canaanite, Hittite, and Amorite brethren who sojourned from the land of Canaan seeking new homes, their dominion, listen to this, their dominion and inhabitation extended from Northeast and Southwest Africa, okay, over there, across the great Atlantis, even unto the present North, South, and Central America, and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake, which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. This gives us our dominion and inhabitation, right? And this is found in ancient records. We have so many archives and um, and also um, pardon me, Morris. We have so many archives and um, also artifacts from North America all the way down to the tip of South America, all the way down to Brazil and on further south to Argentina, Chile, Peru, all of these places contain artifacts and archives showing a uh, early Phoenician presence. Okay. And it doesn't matter where you're at. You could be in New Hampshire, New England, you know, you could be in the Midwest, you could be in Illinois, Ohio, Florida, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Brazil, right? All of these places contain these artifacts. And in some cases, archives, actual written records that show this presence. But you're not connected to it unless you know who you are. So this was returned to us. So from our perspective, we know who we are, right? So when I see now that the early um, Portuguese explorers found um, found actual um, artifacts that were written in the Phoenician language that contained scripts in the Phoenician language that they hadn't even um, translated yet, right? So they're finding this stuff in the 1600s, 1700s, and, and, like, and even earlier, 1500s, and they hadn't even translated some of those Phoenician script. So once they were able to translate it hundreds of years later, that kills the possibility that this was a fake, that it was a forgery, because they didn't even know it yet. The Europeans hadn't even trans, you know, scribed that yet. So these things shouldn't have been here prior to their arrival, but they were because we are the Moabites. We are who our ancestors were. And so now we know, once you know who you are, now you understand how to interpret this type of um, information. All right. So we have evidence that our ancestors really did come over here. They really did receive permission from the pharaohs, plural, of Egypt to come over here. All right. And so we're given the dominion and the time period. Right. They North, um, South and Central America. Mexico and the Atlantis Islands, but it happened before the great earthquake which caused the Atlantic Ocean. And so even if you don't know the exact time period that the earthquake happened, which caused the continents to split up, we know that it happened before the Europeans arrived. Okay. It happened prior to 1492, which means that this is our land. We're the indigenous people of this land. We were here prior to their arrival. Okay, so that's important now. You know your inhabitation. And now that you know this and you know who you are, and you're coming together um, as, a, as a state, as a nation, right? You're relinking back into your own divine heritage, your culture. 
now now you 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 um you have the right to want your land back okay you were here this long before the great earthquake was caused the Atlantic Ocean so that's important so this is something that satisfies right this is why it's a nation it wasn't just because of the filing no it's because at the way that we moved the way that it was set up right this is establishes who you are even from an international law perspective okay then going um i'm going to move things forward um there must also be a capacity to enter into relations with the outside world prophet went to Nevada, <coughs> cuba 1928 also went to Mexico. The dude who was trolling went from saying, oh, it's fake. They never went to the Pan-American Conference. And when we showed it, he actually went to Cuba. He's like, oh, well, we don't have records of him on the rolls at the Pan-American Conference. It's like, dude, do you even have any records of like who was there and who spoke? Right? Because there's no records that show everyone that spoke. They don't show everything that was discussed. That was like a precursor to the... Um, United Nations, okay? And you don't have any records of it. But we know he went there, so nobody can really attack that, right? So um, you have the ability to enter into trade, to enter into re relations with the outside world. This is important. You have to be able to be recognized by your peers, okay? And... Um, this is what was established so that hey we have the asiatic states of north america okay we're not just going over to cuba or to mexico to play soccer right going over there to get some drugs <laughs> you know no going over there to establish trade like look we have farms we can do x y and z let's get it going all right and then um Five, the inhabitants of the territory must have attained a degree of civilization so as to enable them to observe with respect the outside world, those, those principles of law which are deemed to govern the members of the international society in their relations with each other. Okay? And this is why we have Islamism. And it's known around the world. Okay? Who we are and how we move. We are civilized. We had to have our own religion. We had to return to this. Okay. Um, Christianity has failed us as a whole, not knocking a religion or the church or anything like that, but it's failed us, especially if we look at the conditions of many of our impoverished communities and you see what people are going. I mean, the rappers, rappers and gangsters wearing Jesus peace. Okay. They, they see nothing wrong with that. No contradiction at all. It's not working for us. You know, the KKK, where the, you know, the, uh, they, they went through lynching people in the church this day. So it, it, it didn't work for us. But then, okay. And so um, just moving on, um, we're, we're going to go ahead and get to the, um, I'm not going to go through all these slides, though you, you can go and look at this yourself. It's online, it's been online for years. Um, believe it's called the structure of the MST of A. Okay. But um we're gonna go ahead and start to talk about the uh the actual Supreme Grand Council. Okay. So um as we move to that topic though, all right, we have the the temple that was set up. You we moved as a nation. The prophet moved as a nation. All right. The temple in its structure is a theocratic constitutional monarchy. Remember, we spoke on that earlier. This is what our ancestors had. Right. The government of ancient Egypt was theocratic. The priests were the actual governors of the empire. And this is what we have set up now. OK, so our priests our our sheiks, our divine ministers are actually members of the government. And then within our government, there's three branches, just like the United States government. So there's an executive branch, which would be the head of the Morris Science Temple of America. Then you have the um, judicial branch, which is what the Supreme Grand Council is. And then you have the legislative branch, which is what your um, your grand governors, your, your grand sheiks would be. Okay? The legislative branch makes the laws. And if you want to know who makes the laws in the more science temple of America, just look at the divine constitution. 
it's right there in your face. So if you look at the divine constitution, it says the Grand Sheik and the chairman of the Moore Science Temple of America is empowered to make and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of the Moore Science Temple of America. The grand uh, assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Right? Islam, as the brother uh, McKinney L said, that's right there in Act One. So on one, um, on one hand, you could look at that as saying the Grand Sheik and chairman of the Moore Science Temple of America, period, right? Like a national head. You could look at it like that, but also at the local level, right? Which is what really matters because in, in your town, in your city, all right, it doesn't really matter so much what the president's doing or saying, right? Um, every, every election year, they do this like automatically. They always go to um, like one of their talking points is always something like gay rights or something like that, right? And um, maybe gun laws or something like that. But in actuality, even though they can set federal laws, in actuality, all that stuff is decided where? At the state level, okay? So what's really important is what's being done at the state level. Each state is able to rule itself. Each state has a president. It's the governor, right? They have an executive um, head of every state. They, they all have their own Supreme Court. Every state has the judicial and they have the legislative branch, right? Some of you, you know, you live in the Capitol. You see this. They, they, the, all the representatives go to the Capitol building and they make laws for the entire state. And that's really where the power is at. That's really what matters. And it's the same way with the temple. Right. The Grand Sheik and the chairman of the Moore Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the prophet and the grand body of the Moore Science Temple of America. All right. And the assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik. So this is showing how laws are made right at the local and national level. <coughs> OK. And so we have that structure set up. So you have your legislative branch, which you could say is the grand body. All right just so that that's, that's established, right? And then um, you have your Supreme, you know, Grand Council, it's the judicial branch. They're interpreting the law, okay? Um, hang on a second. All right, so um, all right, so just so we had that set, okay. The Grand Sheik makes the laws. Islam, as uh, Brother Dandrigel said, the Grand Body or Governors assist. Okay, oh, you're speaking on the Council rulings. Okay, Islam. So the Supreme Grand Council interprets the laws. All right. They interpret the uh, excuse me. Interpret the laws and put out rulings. All right. So this is good to understand because like it's not like the Supreme Grand Sheik is just the head and he's making laws. No, they're supposed to interpret the law. It's supposed to be the judicial branch. All right. There's supposed to be checks and balances in place at every level. All right. So this is important to understand. Um Let's let's move forward. All right. Okay, well, yeah, as it says here on the slides, you see that we already talked about that. Executive, grand sheik and chairman, legislative, grand body, and a prophet. How is it the prophet? By um regulating ourselves to the prophet's laws. All right. Constitution, divine constitution, bylaws, Quran, Quran questionnaire. Okay, that's why the prophet held those three items up when he said, I've given you everything that it takes to save a nation. I'll take it and save yourself. And he's holding up those three items, right? So that's how the grand body and the prophet work together. Okay, judicial, supreme grand council. Three, um, 
three branches of government. All right. Theocratic constitutional monarchy. Right. No separation for us of, you know, religion and, and state. Allah is the sovereign ruler. All right. Okay, so um, let's. I'm not gonna go over all of these slides in here. Let's let's go ahead and move on. So um, one thing I want to show you though. Hang on, Morris. Hang on. All right. So um, earlier, right, I was speaking about how the prophet set up the Supreme Grand Council last. Okay, it was one of the final things that he did. When did this actually occur? In 1928 at the first convention. Okay. All right. But what was occurring before that? <laughs> before the Supreme Grand Council was set up, you had the building process occurring across the nation where temples were um in addition to you know having the sunday school the holy day right teaching um our, our teaching our, our religion islam islamism to to the members also the members are putting up finance the members are establishing businesses right they're able to save money at the local level and then also putting up money at the national level Okay, this is occurring before the Supreme Grand Council was established. All right, and this is important because you know, um, a lot of people think that okay, hey, if we get the council going, that's gonna fix everything. It's not gonna fix everything in the state that we're in. Um, you have several uh Supreme Grand Councils or people that call themselves Supreme Grand Sheik out here right and that's a problem because like that can't be one of our free national standards if we have several of them right there has to be one that's recognized right i'll give you an example with the nation of islam a lot of people don't even know there's like several different nation of islams right you got one that i think it is based in like atlanta with this guy he doesn't agree with farrakhan he thinks he went against um the honorable elijah muhammad you have another one too that i think he's based out of houston he doesn't agree with there's one that let me see man there's one his name was royale man i saw this guy like a long time ago it's probably been like 10 years or something since i've seen this dude let me see if he still even exists there was this dude named royale i think he was in um um i think he was in like kansas city <laughs> okay yeah, okay, yeah. So this guy, he called his stuff the United Nation of Islam, and he had like this far out story, which I'm not gonna go into, about how he why he believed he was leader. Well, you can see it says he was abducted by angels, right? Taught him how to rule the earth. But anyway, so this dude, like he he started his own nation of Islam too. And that's the only reason really why I brought that up. That's dude. Yeah, I, I don't even know if dude's still alive, man. But um, so there's different nations of islam <laughs> okay nation of islam so however you would say that out there but they don't matter they don't matter and that's not knocking them i'm not trying to be mean i'm just being real they don't matter the only one that matters is this one the one that's ruled by minister louis farrakhan none of the other ones even exist as far as anyone else is concerned okay so minister farrakhan is actually moving as a head of state they have thousands of members right they have their own system set up where they they govern themselves by that they have their own um divine principles and way of governing themselves like they're not gonna do everything like the nation of islam members shouldn't be out here you know taking all the pictures like you know the females doing butt first right little selfies and and out here dressing scantily and doing the drugs and gang banging and all this stupid mess right they, they can govern themselves okay and so if they have a council their council actually has some type of authority because they can put out a, de a decree and um 
other members are going to go out and carry it out. Even their paramilitary unit, the Fruit of Islam, they're going to carry it out. It's going to get done. All right. Okay. And so you can't have several Supreme Grand Councils. That's foolish. That's ignorant. There's no way that will work. No way. All right. No way that that will work. I agree. You know, I agree with you. And I agree with you again. You know, there's no way to know who's legit. But he, he, there is a way to know who's legit and who's valid. And it's not by their filings. They'll, the people who are acting as... Um, anyway, so what I was saying is um, there is a way to actually... Hang on. There is a way to um, know who's valid and legitimate, and it's not by their filings. Like, let me show you something. Um, this is what people who are saying that they're the Supreme Grand Council or saying that they're the official Morris Science Temple of America. This is what they'll tell you now, like right now, if you talk to them. They'll show you some filing and tell you that this is why they're official. All right, let me show you an example. And I, they all do this, all of them. They'll all show you some filing. Uh, uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to. Okay, I, I don't have enough time to find this filing. But anyway, they all have filings. They'll all show you some court filing and say that this is why we're the official uh, more science simple of America. We're recognized. You see, we're recognized in the court. We did X, Y, and Z, right? They'll all say that. And that's, that's not what makes anyone official. That's not what works. That, 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 that's not good enough. All right. Now, the reason why I was showing all those examples of how the prophet actually moved was to build up to this. All right. This is what makes you official. And as far as I know, nobody's doing this. And they're not trying to knock anyone who's attempting to or who's doing the good work. No. This is what makes you official. Okay. Um, if you can see, this, this is from the Moorish Guide newspaper. Temple 4 out of Detroit, Michigan had four business enterprises, two grocery stores, a printing press, and a laundry. All right. They were generating finance. They were doing the work. They were following the profit. Why do I say they were following the prophet? Because the prophet said, all right, and, you know, from our perspective, okay, um, a beggar nation, right? <laughs> a beggar nation is not going to be able to achieve its potential. All right, from out here, ourselves from the economics plight, which is, I mean, the greatest plight, excuse me, which is economic slavery. It's a part of our religion. We believe this can best be done by encouraging, patronizing, and establishing our own business enterprises and cultivating our own acres of land. And who, where's this coming from, right? So these words are coming from the prophet. It's a part of our religion to open businesses, to get land, to cultivate land. This is a part of our religion. So if you're not, if you're looking at people that are claiming to be the Moorish Science Temple of America, and they're like, well, this is, look at this file, and it shows our unbroken lineage going all the way back to the prophet. If that's what they're claiming and standing on, you know, you might want to stay away from it because the prophet said, and this is from, um, uh, uh, from, uh, what, what is it? From, uh, Morris leaders, historical message to America, like speaking specifically about the economics. You can't lead us out because this is what's supposed to be discussed at convention, the economics, the enterprises that we're, you know, accomplishing and our growth, Right. We're not supposed to be going to a convention to play dress up. 
The prophet said, I urge you to remember there is work enough for all to do in helping to build a better world. The problems of life are largely social and economic. In a profound sense, they're moral and spiritual. Okay? But they're largely social and economic. Okay? So that can't be left out. And, and he spoke on this over and over again and let it be known this is a part of our religion. Be a beggar people cannot develop the highest in them, nor can they attain a genuine enjoyment of the spiritualities in life. So business, finances, this is a part of our business. I mean, our religion. The business is a part of our religion. Okay? We shall be secure in nothing until we have economic power. A beggar people cannot develop the highest in them, nor can they attain to a genuine enjoyment of the spiritualities in life. In connection with our religious aims and beliefs, we must promote economic security. The preaching, preaching is a part of our religion of economic security among us is by no means as widespread and intense as, as the circumstances demand. No other thing is more needed among us at this time than greater economic power. So this is from the prophet. OK, and this is from Noble Drew Ali, which means this is law for us. And so if Moors aren't holding to that, I don't care what titles they have. Right. Like if all the members of ex-cons and drug addicts, if the sheiks and the governors and, the, you know, these people are, you know, using drugs and have alcohol problems and stuff like this. You know, if they don't have any businesses, they're not getting any land, they're not moving in that direction. They're not official. Bottom line, if if um, the meetings that we're having, right, we're having conference calls and meetings and we're getting together to plan convention, okay? Then we're, this, it's not official. The prophet ain't with us. Don't get with those moors unless you're gonna help turn things around. All right? Because like, it's not like the temple shouldn't be planning convention all year. <laughs> you're supposed to be opening businesses up supposed to be acquiring land how are we going to grow our own food right how are you going to grow and get people with skills to come into the temple they're not going to take it seriously it's decrepit it's broken down all you guys want to do is get together and plan convention nobody who's like doing who's successful is going to come into that so it's not going to grow everybody this coming in can't be people who's trying to escape from something, trying to see what the temple could do for me. You know, there's nobody coming in to help build it up, right? Like, no, it can't be like that. So, um, you know, that's like to, to answer to what you said earlier, right, about not knowing who's official for the general public, right? There's no way to know who's legit, who's valid. Well, I know how to know who's not legit and not valid the Moors who aren't building the economics up, it doesn't matter what titles they have. The Moors who are validating themselves by their legal filings, the things that they put in, you know, Cook County on the record, that's their, they're claiming their lineage. The profit ain't with them, bottom line, right? Because that's not how it works. The profit set up the Supreme Grand Council last. It was one of the last things he did. The Moors were already generating finance. They didn't wait for the Supreme Grand Council to be established to generate finance. You they didn't wait. You're not waiting on anything. You're not waiting on a you know the the grand body to agree on or micromanage you opening this business and they're sitting on your plans for you know who knows how long like no the temples locally each temple right each grand sheik is empowered to what make it enforce law right and with the assistance of the grand body and the prophet but no it's empowered to make an enforce law right and so if our prophet said that this is a portion of our religion the preaching of economic security OK, I don't care what your divine title is, what grand supreme, whatever is in your title. You're not preaching economic security. Preaching is not just talking. It's actually doing. Actually, the best way to teach is by living example. Like, for example, in our temple, 
our local temple here in Columbus, Ohio. Um, my wife and I aren't the only ones that's married, right? We have other members that are married, other families, other people with their their you know with their mate, with their children, right? We're not the only ones that are like real people with children, with families that take this serious. We have other people who take it seriously as well. Okay. And so like to use us as an example, there's no way that we could be under people who don't got their stuff together. No way. Ain't no way it's going to work. We follow the prophet. We take it seriously. If you out here doing foolishness, you can't be in power. It don't work like that. The law is straightforward, right? You can't be in power if you don't follow the prophet. The prophet's not with you. And then just going back to that, just using us as an example, um, one reason why people who have families, people that are married, people you know that are that take this seriously would come into the temple and work with us and help us build it is because they see that we do. They see that we married. They see that you know it's not just me. And my wife ain't even with this because she don't trust it. Because I mean, no, it's my wife's there, children's there. They see that we take it seriously. And so if you have people that are supreme and they not even married or they got baby mamas and they don't even mess with their children. Like those, are, they're not, they shouldn't even be in those positions. They can't control and supervise the affairs of the Morris Science Temple of America because they can't even control and supervise their own lower self. It'll never work. It'll never get off the first floor. Okay. There'll never be any more grocery stores or anything of that nature. Any more farms, none of that. It, it's not going to work. Okay. And so you can do that though, without waiting for the Supreme Grand Council. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This, this putting together of the Supreme Grand Council is not the end all be all. That's like, like um, I was just driving past some houses the other day that were being constructed, right? You see the houses, you see like the skeleton is put together where you have wood and then they come back in and reinforce it. You're putting the pipes and all of that stuff in. Well, um, to try to build the Supreme Grand Council without doing that, that's like trying to build the outside of the house just with no structure or anything in there just to make it look nice, right? You got the wood paneling or, you know, whatever siding, vinyl siding and all that stuff. But you didn't build the structure. You didn't build the actual foundation that's going to hold it up. Right. Islam, as the brother, as the brother said, you can't build the roof first. Thank you. So to do that, to try to build the Supreme Grand Council. But you didn't get the finances even like, you know, to to up to to sustain it. Right. Like none of that. It doesn't work. It don't carry any weight. It doesn't. So that's like trying to build the outside of the house or trying to build the roof first, but you didn't build the structure. You didn't build the actual house, the real, you know, the substance. Like, no, you build that first. Then you build the outside of it, right? Then you build these other portions that the prophet did last. He did it last for a reason. Not last because it's not important. No, it's important to us from our perspective within our nation, right? Yes, it has a function, but... Did it need to be done first? No. So you have more that are trying to like try to act like they're picking up right where the prophet left off. But it's an act because obviously the temple, you know, um, dwindled down to almost nothing. All right. So we have to build that back up. So, the, um, you know, you can't build a Supreme Grand Council first because first off, it doesn't have any power and authority. It doesn't. They can't say, oh, you Moors over there in North Carolina, you Moors over there in Ohio, y'all got to do this. And if not, we're going to shut you down. Well, like, what are they going to do? They can't shut you down. They can't stop you. Nobody can. First off, in this country, you have religious freedom. This is another thing these Moors will not tell you because they want to act like you have to come under them because they have the lineage and all these things. No, in this country, we have religious freedom. The prophet didn't set the temple up as something that, like, if you don't file every year, it, you know, it expires. It's set up in perpetuity, which means that you right there, wherever you're at, you could be all the way off in Idaho, where there's not even a lot of Asiatics. You get together 
with the other Asiatics, maybe there's three of you. You have your what? You have your treasurer, your secretary, and your chairman. You have your temple. What did the prophet say? He said, I've given you everything that it takes to save a nation. Now take it and save yourself. What was he holding up? The Quran, the questionnaire, and the divine constitution and bylaws. He said, now take it and save yourself because if you take the laws and you follow the laws, the prophet is with you. So for the Moors who think that the prophet was holding up your filing, he, he wasn't holding up your filing in Cook County and say, here, Moors need this. This is what, no, he was holding up the Quran, the divine constitution and bylaws and the Quran questionnaire. And that's available for everyone. You don't have to agree. The prophet established this and the prophet trumps everyone. He held up three items because that's all it takes. You take that and you follow it. You follow the divine plan of the ages. You build up your finances. Why? Because it's a part of our religion. Islam. So you, you follow the laws and you can establish your temple right there where you're at. Everyone can. Now, we're not saying that there's no need for appointments and things of this nature. Just saying that if the people who are acting in these positions aren't following the prophet, the prophet's not with them. Bottom line. And that's, that's the way things go. It's plain and simple. If you have people who are in these positions who aren't carrying out their duties, they're to be removed because the prophet's not with them. They're out of law, period, point blank. They don't have any power. And that's another reason. That's why these people who are in these positions don't have any power. They can't make Moors in Florida or in wherever you're at do anything because the prophet's not with them and they don't have power and authority. They can't shut anyone down. They can't stop anyone from generating finances. It's all a lie. It's all a lie, Moors. They've been lying. Um, and pretty much, you know, you have Moors all over the country doing this. So it's not like it's just one group. This is just how it's going down across the board. Across the board. You have, you know, Moors in Atlanta, Moors in uh, Chicago, Moors in New York, Moors in all different places. They're running the same game. It's a game, Moors. And for those who are confused, like I said earlier, I'm not saying that the Supreme Grand Council isn't an important function. No, it was set up for a reason. It has a purpose and a meaning, but the prophet established it last. So not having the Supreme Grand Council doesn't mean that your temple's not generating finances. Okay. It mean that you're sending per capita. Okay? It mean that there's treasurer and a national treasurer. You can have that stuff set up so that you can build your nation. Okay? You don't need that. It, it, I mean, you don't you don't have to um, stifle yourself just because, you know, portions of the um, movement are not functioning properly. No, you can still do that. This is what the prophet was doing for years, years before the Supreme Grand Council was even established. OK. And the more even um, before you actually had the appointments to the Supreme Grand Council, there were already discussions to purchase land, to have farms. And before that, once again, the temples, each bit temple is to have several businesses. And this was important. And this was being done before the council, before you even had the appointments, right? And why would that be important? Because if you're going to um, have a nation, if you're going to have these people in position, you need the finances to back it up or it carries no weight. All right. So I'm telling you, like, Moors, you know, it's, you know, there's a lot of corruption, man. 
you know there's people who would be you know who don't want this information this understanding getting out why because one of the things that stifles the movement is to keep everybody worried about things that aren't going to move you forward you know for example right instead of actually following the prophet instead of actually getting out there preaching economic security right actually building up your local you're spending the whole year planning convention right nothing is actually coming out of that people are you know waiting on their appointments or they're you know holding you know different positions over people's heads right these are all meant to stifle you all meant to keep the movement in a place where it's been at for the last almost uh the last what like 90 years stagnant that's where it's at right but if we're looking at um the records from our morris literature right you can see when the actual uh appointments were made to the supreme grand council we're talking about october 17th 20 i mean 1928 right this is when uh the prophet stepped forward from the chamber room and declared that he now had his number and the grand body had accepted his choice in the setting of the supreme grand council all right the prophet also declared what their duties were in conjunction with that of the grand body which consists of the executive rulers chief rulers governor he said that both are to work hand in hand with each other those who act as in supreme council duties were to continue on with each other and those who act as in supreme council duties were to continue on with the day-to-day -day functions of this movement while the grand body was to intercede that the prophet noble drew ali was the law and at the head of this movement all right and then the prophet announced uh announced the uh appointments to the council all right and so um nobody's saying that the council is not important that it didn't have a function just saying that it was set up last and it was set up last for a reason right it didn't stop the temples from generating finance it didn't even stop them from generating finance and at the national level this was all being done prior to the council set up it didn't stop the prophet from moving as a head of state right we showed that he went to cuba in early 1928 right in january that's when he went to cuba so this was occurring before the appointments were set up okay and so you can't pick up in 2022 and just act like you've already like everything is being done in order and we could just pick up right where the profit left off okay in some ways you can because you can say okay we have the laws we know how to conduct ourselves how to clean ourselves up but in some ways you can't because you have to be honest about where we're at you know as a collective you have to build things up and the best way to build things up is to actually follow the prophet's example and the prophet um set his example his footprints clearly right you can see what they were doing i know i keep saying about the businesses but it's because you got all of these moors that aren't doing it they're acting like that stuff doesn't even matter okay it's like moors want to have the great moorish parade but they don't even have the finances to make that type of move sustainable right you can't ask moors to put up their money and you have to spend money to go all the way to chicago to stay in chicago staying in a hotel that's not asiatic owned you're you know possibly even the businesses that you're you know like food and stuff that you need like the money that you're spending is not going with asiatic businesses right so that should be like one of the first things this should be on the table. Hey, we need to have our own our own hotel before we have another convention. Okay? But you can't do that if everything is splintered. If you have several bodies, several people claiming to be the Moore Science Temple of America. It doesn't work like that. Right? And that's always going to be an issue 
And I'll tell you the, a secret. The main reason why it's an issue, why you have several different people claiming to be the heads is because you have several mores, even in these positions, who don't take the movement seriously. They don't follow the prophet's laws. It doesn't apply to them when it doesn't seem fit. And if they don't take it seriously, the members don't take it seriously. And so if somebody says, like, say you um, fall out with somebody who's ahead, you know, in, in um, leadership within the temple, they're going to try to remove you. Uh, the average person, all they'll do is just leave and go to another group. Right. And that's because there's no respect. There's no honor. There's no dignity. And it's not saying that the people that are leaving necessarily are the ones that are the issue. Right. They don't really respect the leadership. The leadership doesn't really have any power and authority. And in many cases, these um, these groups like that's why I'm saying like the Supreme Grand Council don't really have any power because they can't even get the moors within their own body, within their own organization to go along with them, let alone getting the other people who consider themselves the Moore Science Temple of America to come up under them. That's never going to happen because they can't even get their own members to respect them. Right. Their own members don't even really recognize them. And so this is something that, you know, it's it's an, it's an issue. It's occurring because at the end of the day, you know, we have a lot of mores that are just trying to, um, you know, look the part. They're just trying to look the part. They want to have the great Moorish parade. But they didn't want to build up and do the work that it took to even get to this point where you can announce to the world that you're a nation. Right. The prophet was going all over the country, making sure that all of the temples were operating properly. Right. When the prophet was coming in, the you know, the, the sheiks and people at the temples, they make sure everything's clean. You know, we're, we're doing everything right. Right. We're making progress. So this was all occurring. And this was the lead up to the parade. You don't you don't announce yourself. You don't do these things if you're not actually doing the work, you know. And, um, you know, as far as like sending reports and all that stuff, we do all of that. We do everything we're supposed to. But, you know, you have people in leadership who don't even do that stuff. OK. And if the people in leadership aren't doing it and you're doing it, then it's hard to really take these people seriously. It's difficult. So the, at the end of the day, you know, the problem just falls right back on our own shoulders. You can't blame anyone else. For the conditions that we're in except for ourselves it always comes back to us because the prophet gave us everything that it takes everything and if it's not successful you just have to look at yourself always right it's not somebody outside of ourselves it's not you know because we're oppressed or none of that right it's always us and then also what we allow what we allow to go on what we allow to um to continue to endure what we put up with, okay? And so, you know, a, a lot of more, um, and this this all has to play with the Supreme Grand Council. You know, a lot of more, they allow foolishness. They allow things to continue to go on that are out of law because of their own personal reasons. And any more that are doing that, you know, you're siding with your lower self over the profit. And that's why it's not gonna work. You know, and um, just going back to what I said previously, there's no way that the Supreme Grand Council can fix this because first off, you have several Supreme Grand Councils. You have several people claiming to be the Supreme Grand Sheik. That's never going to work. OK, that's why I showed the example to more science. I mean, of the nation of Islam, that's never going to work. You have to have. You have to have the head that's recognized across the board, or at least that the majority of us recognize, okay? Because if you can't get that done, then you don't have any authority. Nobody even recognizes you. So it can't be splintered. That's one reason why this is just um, organizing the council is not gonna work. There's several people claiming to be the council, okay? And um, two, you know, you can't have the council and then ignore the main issue, which is economic slavery. Right. We, we suffer from economic slavery. So we have to be preaching economic security. So we have this has to be a part of every temple. And that's something that you can do at the local level. 
everyone can. You don't have to wait on somebody to come along and, and show you how to get it done. Right. Each and every one of us can do that. Um, one thing, though, I want to share, too, uh, as we go into closing. Right. All right. This is also from um, the Moorish Guide. Right. To make changes it says it is reported that the prophet, the supreme executive authority will appoint a supreme grand council of which he will be the supreme grand chairman. The supreme grand council will have the power and duty to control and supervise all the affairs and properties of the more science temple of America. And it will be the sole judge of what constitutes conduct injurious to the order, peace, interest or welfare of the organization or at variance with this constitution and bylaws and also the rules and regulations made by the prophet shall be the sole judge of the sufficiency of the evidence by which such conduct is shown. Okay. And I'm just going to stop there because the main thing in here, right. They will have power and duty to control and supervise all the affairs and properties of the more science temple of America. Okay. So if there's no properties, right, there's no affairs, there's no business occurring what's the council supervising what are they doing if there's no business affairs if there's no properties no real estate okay what are they supervising i'll show you i'll tell you nothing it's going to be a bunch of micromanaging right nothing will be occurring no growth will be occurring so you can't substitute that and just like like some people you know may hear this and get upset they're not really listening nobody's attacking the supreme grand council or attacking <clears throat> the temple or any of that saying it's important it has its role but that's not the end all be all you can't skip over the real issue right they can't supervise the affairs and properties of the more science temple of america if there's no properties to supervise there's no affairs there's no is enterprises, no businesses, because what else are grown people going to counsel, going to come together, congregate together to talk about, right? If they're coming together, then there has to be some real business to handle. And so that's the real issue. That's why um, things aren't moving forward, right? There's no growth. You know, the more that are in it. We do have a lot of Moors that are trying to come in here to escape from something. But I think for the most part, most of the people are sincere. I think the majority of the people across the board are sincere. The only reason you're coming into this is because, you know, you really want to improve your conditions. Right. And the problem is that there's people in leadership who, you know, maybe their heart's not in the right place. I don't know what the issue is, but they're not following the prophet because if they were, they will be moving to, to tackle our greatest plight, which is economic security, right? Economic slavery, the bottom line. It's a part of our religion. In addition to the moral and spiritual side, it's that. And so for the question that was asked earlier, how do you see who's official? It's not let me see your paperwork. Let me see your lineage connecting you to Emily Ill, connecting you to the prophet. No, let me see businesses do you do. And if you have that, then what's there, right? What, are, what is being discussed in the meetings? If there's a grand body call, if there's a, you know, a national call or, you know, at the convention, what's being discussed here what's coming out of it right if they're not making any moves no economic growth is occurring if you know i would say build with the moors in your area actually make it happen do that regardless and you know you can assist you can try to help but there's only so much you can do right so um you know people are um at the, if you ask me at the end of the day they're trying to you know to build things backwards and that's that's not gonna work. You don't you don't build the outside of the house first. You can't do that. You have to build the structure. The prophet showed you how to do it. He didn't make the supreme grand council. That's why the timeline was up there. He didn't make the council in um in 1926. Okay, he didn't make the council in 1927. He made it 
at the end of 1928. He appointed the members in, and this is after he's already going to Cuba and, and being recognized as a head of state. How's he being recognized as a head of state? Because you have all of these temples in all these different cities that recognize you as the head, and you're generating finances all over the place. And that was what was done first. That was most important. You can't leave that out. And so if you're truly going to follow the prophet, you're going to have to follow that example. And that will ensure your success. And even if Moors aren't there yet, but they're trying to move in that direction, that's how you recognize who's real, um, who the people that say they're the Moors Science Temple of America. That's how you re recognize who is actually the Moors Science Temple of America. It's not about their filings. Right. Because in all honesty, anybody can do those filings. Some people may try to act like you can't and act like they can legally shut you down. They can't. They can't. You have religious freedom. Anybody that wants to attack that proves that you don't have religious freedom in this country. Go right ahead and try. You're going to lose every time. And that's why the Moors are losing, because you have Moors that are trying to stand on that. Right. And it's it's a you know it's like standing on quicksand, but instead of actually following a prophet, building up the structure, right, getting that finances together, then you have power and authority, right? You actually are moving as a unit. Now you have power and authority. So that's it. That's that's where it's at. That's where the Supreme Grand Council is at in 2022. We're starting at square one, and um. You know, there's division. Like I said, I'm not going to show all these different people that are claiming to be the head because that's really embarrassing. That's that's goofy. But with that splintering, there's no way any of those people have any power and authority. They don't. And they can't stop anything. And there also there's no growth. Um, if you want to see growth, you have to do that at the local level with real people, real mores. You have to build it up and you have to be the growth. You have to do it for real. You have to follow the prophet and you can't allow others to sway you away from the prophet or to stifle you. Right. And so anyone can do that. The way that the prophet set the movement up, anybody can do it. It doesn't matter if you're in Montana, you could be off in, you know, some little small town in um, Nevada. It doesn't matter where you're at. Everyone can establish a temple right there. I'm not saying don't align yourself with other Moors and with the temple and, and you know, and, and follow the prophet. No, I'm saying, you know, you can do that. But I'm also saying don't allow anyone to stifle you and to keep you spending time and energy concerned with things that aren't progressing. They've been doing the same thing for years. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing to fear. No more. They, they can't stop anything. Can't stop any growth or anything. And, um, you know, I really just wanted to put that out there because I know a lot of people want to know what it's all about. So we, we talked about what the temple's really about, how it's a nation, why it's a nation. So for those that are out there remixing, have their own form, you know, no knock to them, but you didn't have to try to reinvent the wheel. The prophet already created it. Right. And the way it works, we have our free national standards. People change those things up. Some people changed up the flag. Right. They changed up the Constitution. They did their own thing. And all of that's goofy. That's just like having several different Supreme Grand Councils. Right. It doesn't work. OK. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, get those three things that the prophet held up. This is my advice to everybody out there. Get get a divine constitution, a Quran and the Quran questionnaire. Study and follow the works of the prophet and then actually put it into work for real. Don't just um, don't just study it. Actually begin to live this life and everything will work for you. And then as you do this as a collective, regardless of where you're at, you will be successful. And um, there's nothing anyone can do to stop you. I don't know why anyone would want to, but they can't. So on that note, I want to go ahead and close out. And um, hopefully you learned something from this. Everybody make sure to like and share this. I think some of you, you know, just from looking at what the one of the brothers was saying in the chat, you might wind up, you know, figuring this out on your own, you know, several years from now, <laughs> you know, that it's not the council. They can't stop it. They can't save you, bro. They can't, they don't have any power and authority. 
you know, the main reason is because there's several claiming to be the council, which is goofy. And the other thing is they're not even building up finances. They don't have any power. They don't have, they don't have, you know, thousands of people backing them like the prophet. They definitely don't have hundreds of thousands. You know, there's none that's even at the level of Minister Farrakhan, you know, with having that, that many people in solidarity, recognizing them in leadership. So none of them have any power or authority. It's not through filings with the state or with the county government, right? That's not what, like the brother, I'm glad that brother said that in the beginning of this um, this video, this lecture, where the brother said, uh, you don't create a state by filing in Illinois. So anybody that want to tell you that they got this filing and this is why they're the official, or you know, because they're connected to such and such, you know, they're they're selling you a game. They're selling you a lie. You know, and um, it's it's about it's by your works and deeds. All right, that's what it's really about. So at the end of the day, you can always tell who's official by their works and deeds. And um, if things don't match up, and if you see things that are funny, that you know, that just seem weird, right? Maybe you don't want to get involved with those moors because um, you shouldn't ignore red flags. And on that note. We're going to go ahead and get up out of here. But um, everybody just take heed to that. Take heed to that. And remember that when you're talking more, it's like, you know, see what they're actually doing and get receipts. Like, want to see this business. Where, where's this stuff at? You know, how are you working to make that happen? You know, or y'all just wasting time, right? Because uh, you can't be the Supreme Grand Council if you're not managing over properties and businesses. You're not supposed to be just wasting time. This wasn't a game. That's why the prophet set it up last. The Moors already had businesses all over the country. So there was actually something to manage. And on that note, let's go ahead and get up out of here, Moors. Make sure that you hit like and share this. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to ruffle feathers. Who cares? We're going to tell the truth, Moors. We don't hide and we're not scared. And on that note, let's get up out of here. Peace and love.